Hey everybody, welcome to my meditation boot camp. Welcome to part 10 of the meditation boot camp. Here we're going to learn how to entertain the monkey. The first realization that most people come to when meditating is that you can't control the mind. You can't simply say stop to the voice in your head. It just won't listen. So why is that? The reason is the second realization that most people come to through meditation is that you are not your mind. So sometimes when people first start meditating, they don't realize just how noisy their mind is because they've not really observed it before. They always just thought it was themselves. So when they first sit down, to try to catch a glimpse of silence. All they can hear is their mind chattering away. And that can be a little scary at first to realize that this thing is just talking constantly in your head. And you may never have heard it as though it's a separate thing. So when you first start meditating, it can seem as though your mind actually starts to get louder. It's not really getting louder. It's just that you're noticing it more. And that can sometimes be frightening. But don't worry about that. Just keep following the steps that I've laid out so far. And the mind will naturally start to calm down on its own. If you try to wrestle with it and fight with it, then it could start to get noisier. And then you might have problems. So if we can't control the mind, how do we get it to calm down and eventually stop talking? We give it a job to do. We distract it by giving it a very simple task. So instead of just allowing it to chatter away incessantly, we take control of it and we give it a simple task so that we are using the mind rather than it just mindlessly rambling on. So instead of just letting it chat away incessantly, we take control and we give it a little task to keep it distracted. We actively use it, just like any tool, so we entertain the monkey. But this is really important. And this is where a lot of people go wrong with meditation. Meditation is not a passive thing. You don't just sit there and wait for silence to happen. Whatever task you give the monkey to do, you hover over that monkey, reminding it to go back to work as soon as you catch it goofing off. In the case of our puppy, you don't even let it see the alligator across the street. You just gently pull on its leash every time it starts to turn its head in that direction. If it does wander away to get the alligator, then don't yell at it. Just gently bring it back to where you want it and focus on it again. Sometimes, of course, you'll get dragged into the story and end up wrestling with the alligator. But as you get more experienced, you'll catch the puppy earlier and earlier and will be able to bring it back to whatever task you gave it quickly. So ironically, we use the mind to distract the mind. There is a saying in Buddhism that the mind is a wonderful tool, but a lousy master. So we're gonna give the mind a chew toy, something to play with and keep it distracted. We're gonna give the mind something to focus on. It can be literally anything. It doesn't need to be complicated, but it does need to be repetitive. Following your breath, listening to your heartbeat, listening to a cricket chirping outside the window, counting mala beads or rosary beads, or listening to a metronome. Each of those tasks are very, very simple and straightforward, but you have to be really ferocious in your focus in order to stay on top of your mind. So what do I mean by ferocious? So you know how sometimes you hear a noise in the middle of the night that kind of wakes you up and you lay there, not moving a muscle, just listening so intently. You're like, you're trying to listen for that sound again. What was it? You're just waiting for the next time the noise comes along so you can try to identify it. But have you ever noticed how intently you focus on trying to hear that sound, even though there's no sound there right now? That's what you need to do with whatever task you give your mind. You need to listen for that sound like your life depends on it. You never know, it could be a burglar breaking in, or it could have just been the house moving and settling in the evening. So listening for a noise 
that you don't know when or if it's going to happen again. It's like looking for something to appear in a pitch black cave. That's how much focus you have. If you're in a pitch black cave and you think there's a bear in there with you, you're going to be so alive and so focused listening for any noise you can hear. That's what you should be like when you're meditating. So in essence, what we try to do with meditation is give our mind a very simple repetitive task. And whenever it wanders from that task, we gently bring it back to the task. We don't reprimand it. We don't yell at it. We just simply bring it right back to the task without any fuss or drama. As you learn to focus more and more and just watch the task repetitively, what you'll find is that your mind slowly starts to fall asleep. The puppy or the monkey kind of get tired and they get bored and eventually they just calm down on their own. And when they realize that you're not going to let them go off and wander on their own, they eventually just fall asleep. Your mind lets go. And that's when you catch glimpses of that complete stillness. Now, it might not last long, certainly not when you first start meditating, but that's the stillness that people talk about. And when you do find that stillness, no matter how short, it's so tantalizing and so incredible in its simplicity that it will change your life forever. You will no longer be spellbound by what your mind tries to tell you. And over time, you'll feel more in control and you'll start to react to situations differently because your mind is no longer telling you, well, that's what you did the last time. We should do the same thing again now. Now you will have the freedom to go and look at purple rocks, green rocks, yellow rocks, whatever color rocks you want to look at. Your mind loses that bias and you'll simply enjoy life and experience. Your mind won't try to persuade you not to do something new that looks like it might be scary. You'll feel free, you'll feel alive, and the world will seem very, very different. And if your mind does still try to tell you stories, now you may find yourself just laughing at your mind because you realize what it's trying to do. So what kind of things can we do to entertain the monkey? Well, that's what we're going to go over in the next video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.